Okay, metallurgy. Dinesh is B.Tech metallurgy from IIT Bombay. You know, uh, there is there are these pillars which are rust proof in India. Do you know about them? The most famous one is in in front of Kutub Minar. Yes, this is a thousand year pillar, one thousand years old, and even the pollution of Delhi has not touched it. Yeah, it is still not rusting. Yeah, and the other one, this is near Bangalore in Kollur. Yeah, where uh, there is. 750 centimeters of rain a year, 6 to 8 months a year, and this has been there for 2400 years. Yeah, and it is rust proof, no rusting. About the second pillar, what is more interesting is it was not built by any expert, it was built by the tribal, the aboriginals of that area to welcome Adi Shankaracharya when he came to their village. Yeah, so this technology was there not even with like the learned Brahmins or something like that. It was available to the tribals. Yeah, then there is this uh, mystery of zinc. You know, India held the sole knowledge of how to remove zinc from zinc ore for 4000 years. Yeah, because zinc it's a very, very interesting thing. Zinc from the ore the zinc becomes liquid at 997 degrees celsius but that same zinc then vaporizes and becomes gas at 1000 degrees celsius so it is only a 3 degree window that you have to pull that zinc out and it is incredibly difficult yeah you know what we did it was very interesting See, usually if you see a furnace, kya hota hai? there is the furnace and then something is coming out and being accumulated. Isn't it? This is the way most distillation is done. Yes or no? You have got the heat from the bottom and something comes out and it is collected. Now, when the heat was com coming from the bottom, what would happen? The zinc would become liquid. It would go down or it would just evaporate and go out. Right? So, what, what did these people do? They turned it upside down. They put the heat on the top and they put an ice bath below it, cold. So it would come down, then it would go in the cold, it would solidify and you would get the zinc. Yeah? For 4000 years we kept this technique secret over here. Yeah? All the zinc in the world was made only by India. Nobody else could make it only. Yeah? Then one Chinese fellow stole it. Yeah? And then one British fellow stole it from the Chinese. <laughs> There was this guy called William Champion who made the first zinc distillery in Great Britain in the year 1543. Before that for 4000 years, if you wanted zinc you had to come to us. Now this is a nice shloka in the praise of Lord Krishna. When you look at this shloka, do you think that there is anything special about it? It is like all other shlokas, oh Krishna you are great, you are this, you are that. Yes or no? Right? Only thing is there is this thing, there is a protocol called the Katapayadi Sankhya. Okay, took me a long time to learn to pronounce that. <laughs> yeah, so there is this Katapayadi Sankhya where they give particular alphabets, particular numbers. So, for example, Katapaya is 1, and so on. And then, if you substitute these numbers in this shloka, you know what you get? The value of pi correct to 30 decimal places. Yeah, so we knew how to do encryption also. Yeah, Achha, now um, don't you like this what I am talking about? Yes. So clap and tell me no. Yes. Ah. Yeah, you know I am not used to just talking to an audience. I want audience feedback also. All right. Okay. If you don't like it, then uh, do like that. <laughs> so I know. <laughs> now, recently, I had been to uh, Goa. And in Goa, there is this place called Vasco da Gama. You have heard of it, right? Now, why is Vasco da Gama called Vasco da Gama? <laughs> because there was this fellow from Portugal who came and supposedly discovered India. Right? Okay, let me tell you the true story. This story is in Vasco da Gama's own journal, which is there in Lisbon today. Okay? Uh, there were two guys who went searching for India. One of them was Christopher Columbus. The other was Vasco da Gama. Okay. Now Christopher Columbus, he went in the opposite direction from Europe, he went up. Okay. And he found America, only he thought America was India. 
Okay, that is why the natives of Americans are called Indians. Indians. That's where the Indian name comes. Because he thought, I got India. Mil gaya. Right? So he called those people Indian. He called them Indians actually. Then the other people came and you know, called them red because they were not white. <laughs> yes? <coughs> so that was Christopher Columbus' story. Vasco da Gama, he went in the opposite direction. If you know your geography, he came down from uh, Africa and he was too chicken to go out into the main sea. You know, he would only sail keeping the coast in, in view. Okay? And he was having the biggest, biggest ship available at that time in Europe. Alright? So he came all the way down to the Cape of Good Hope. Okay? And over there, he was wondering now, how do I cross? Because from there to go to India, you have to go across the ocean. Across the sea, right? Over there he met a Gujarati. <laughs> whose name was Kanha. Okay, he does not mention the surname. Possibly Patel. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So he met this Kanha bhai. <laughs> who was a trader from India, from Gujarat. Who had ships 12 times the size of this ship. 12 times. And remember, Vasco da Gama's ship was the biggest ship in Europe at that time. Okay? He had ships which were trading ships. Forget about military ships. Trading ships which were 10 to 12 times the size of Vasco da Gama's ship. And Vasco da Gama's ship was escorted with three ships. Like in formation, his ship was in the middle. Those three of our Indian ships escorted this guy to Goa, to India. Yeah? So maybe we should call Kanha, no? <laughs> <laughs> Yes? <laughs> no, I mean, we could go on and on and on. The, the, the amount of history, the amount of knowledge that this country had was phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah? And what was even more phenomenal was these guys had this knowledge 5, 7, 10,000 years ago. Yes? When Europe was still, you know, using bow and arrow to kill... Dear, our people were distilling zinc. <laughs> yes? Now, how did they have this knowledge? Yes? Now, there is only one reason. All our scientists were saints. All of them did pranayam. All of them did yoga. All of them meditated. Yes? So what happened was, because when you have trained your mind like this, when you have meditated, when you, have, when you know how to do this, and you have done it for appreciable number of years, then you are no longer limited by physical instruments. If you want to go into outer space, you close your eyes, doom, you can go. If you want to go into the depth of the atom, you close your eyes, you can get there. And then you are seeing it, right? So it has to be accurate. That is how Arundhati Vasishta turns out to be a twin star system which rotates around each other. Yeah? Are you getting what I am saying? Yes. yes. That is how you can figure out how to make rust proof iron. Which even till today we have not figured out. Yeah? So the, the, the basis of science is spirituality. Yeah? And this wealth that our country has, I will not say had, this wealth that our country has was systematically destroyed by the British when they came here. Yeah? They rewrote our history. So that when they left, they left us with a legacy of being ashamed of our own culture and our own tradition. You know, yoga is for freaks. You should do PT. But unfortunately, do you see that even in today in schools you do PT, you don't do yoga? Yeah. So we have got independence, it's 60 years, but we are still thinking in those terms only. That, that is what the British wanted. Yeah. To break this country, they had to break the education system and break...